Thank you, uh, Els, uh, and thank you, friends, for being here. I see that I see a lot of uh, faces. And Derek, welcome back here. Yeah, <laughs> it's you. nice to see you. Yeah. And it's good that it's here. Um, dear colleagues, dear friends, I would like to focus on the situation of women in Iran, as I always do. During the first four years of the presidency of Rouhani, at least 81 women were hanged. 81 women. No other regime in the world has executed so many women, and it's a disaster. I should point out that Iranian women have fought for their rights for many years and are in a different class than some of their neighbors. The Iranian constitution defines the duty of a woman as to give birth to children and raise them. This constitution puts women at the disposal of men practically as a captive or as a sexual slave. Girls can be deprived of education at the age of 13 and even younger, as her father is permitted to wed her to a much older man. Under President Rouhani, a new law was passed that even allows a man to marry an adopted stepdaughter from the age of nine. Women are banned from studying in more than 77 college fields. Employers have set conditions on the marital status of women they employ and make them sign papers and agree to be fired if they get pregnant. The Iranian regime's law deprive women for artistic activities as a source of income. Women are not allowed to sing in public no, nor are they allowed to play in orchestras and perform in concerts. They are not allowed into sports stadiums uh, where men are playing. The unemployment rate for young women under 30 years old is 85.9%. Many women get university degrees and most of them cannot find jobs and, begin, and become unemployed. And another very, very difficult situation is the prostitution that has increased in Iran. Some women have to sell their body to provi provide for only one meal. According to some government sources, between 5,000 and 15,000 women in the capital, Tehran, sleep on the streets. Iran ranks first in the Middle East and then and third in the world in women's suicide. That is because women are under constant pressure for the way they dress or how to cover their hair. They are subjected to inequality and discriminated against. They are humiliated in various forms and they are deprived of jobs opportunities. Women also have no real influence in politics despite the fact that more than half of the country's university graduates are women. There is no female minister in the cabinet of Rouhani. There is no female minister. He appointed only three women to non-minister posts to act as his own deputies and advisors. In the current Iranian parliament, there are only 17 women in a 290-seated parliament. Women's participation in the parliament is thus only 5.8%. And we have to put question marks on top of that. In these circumstances, I am delighted that the Iranian opposition is led by a very competent lady, and this is our friend, Mariam Rajavi, whom I have met several times. I share her vision for a future democratic Iran, and I have been supporting her movement for many, many years, and I have attended many, many meetings too. So I am quite optimistic, although everything I said at this moment is very pessimistic. But we have to support the Iranian opposition to be able to achieve a regime change in Iran. And I encourage my colleagues, and there are so many people are and so many colleagues are here today. I encourage them to join us, us in this campaign. And I would like to say, let's give us hope. Let's hope and let's look at the future with a lot of strength and good, very good greetings to all of you. Thank you very much.